The thylacine is one of the most well-known extinct species that may still have a surviving population waiting to be discovered. The thylacine is sometimes referred to as the Tasmanian tiger due to its stripes. But the thylacine is not closely related to cats or dogs, but is in fact a predatory marsupial. As marsupials, thylacines carried their young in a pouch, just as kangaroos do. The closest living relative of the thylacine is the famous Tasmanian devil. Devils are much smaller than thylacines, but they have a far more fearsome reputation. For millions of years, thylacines inhabited Australia and Tasmania. During the Ice Age, the ocean levels were several hundred feet lower due to ice trapped at the poles. The lower ocean levels revealed a land bridge, and thylacines were able to move freely between Australia and Tasmania on dry land. But as the Earth began to warm up around 12,000 years ago, ocean levels began to rise, and the two land masses were separated by water, effectively isolating the two populations of thylacines. In Australia, thylacines were important in the stories and beliefs of the Aboriginal people. Many tribes painted images of them on rocks and in caves. Thylacines lived alongside humans for thousands of years. But this all changed when Asian seafarers brought dingoes to Australia about 4,000 years ago. Dingoes bear a striking resemblance to thylacines. They have a similar build due to a similar way of life. But as relatives of both wolves and dogs, dingoes are not marsupials, but are placental mammals. As such, they are capable of producing whole litters of pups multiple times each year. Thylacines had a much lower reproductive rate and might only have one litter every few years. In addition to this, dingoes are a pack hunting species and in the competition between dingoes and thylacines for the same food sources, the pack-hunting dingoes won out on the Australian mainland. But the Tasmanian population of thylacines survived well into the 1900s, and possibly even until today. As settlers began raising sheep in Tasmania, ranchers started to make claims that thylacines were killing and eating the introduced sheep. This led to mass hunting and persecution of thylacines all across Tasmania. Although thylacines certainly did hunt sheep, historians dispute just how much damage they actually caused. The persecution lasted from the 1800s until 1930. The last known thylacine to be killed in the wild was shot in 1930 by Wilf Batty, a farmer from northeastern Tasmania but at least a few thylacines still existed in the wild. In 1933, Elias Churchill trapped a live thylacine and sent it to the Hobart Zoo where it lived for three years. This thylacine, dubbed Benjamin, died on September 7, 1936. Before it died, it was filmed in its enclosure by naturalist David Flea. This priceless footage may depict the movements and life of the last thylacine to exist. But was it the last? It is statistically improbable that the very last member of a species was found and trapped and died in captivity. Legitimate sightings persisted into the 1970s, but since then they have declined. Despite well-funded expeditions to find any remaining thylacines in the wild, no irrefutable evidence has yet been found. But sightings are still reported regularly. Often these sightings end up being non-native foxes or dogs, but some sightings still seem convincing. Even if thylacines are extinct, that doesn't mean we might not ever see one again in the flesh. A thylacine pup that was preserved in 1866 still contains viable DNA. This pup was preserved in alcohol rather than formaldehyde, which has ensured the preservation of DNA. The efforts to reassemble thylacine DNA have been slow, but it is conceivable that in the not-so-distant future, the thylacine could be cloned and brought back to life. But even if they could be cloned, do you think they should be cloned? Or do you think that thylacines could still exist in the wild waiting to be discovered? Let us know what you think.